Hi, I'm Linda Quinlan. I'm Ann Charles. I'm Keith Gosland, and welcome to All Things LGBTQ. We are taping on Tuesday, March 5th. It's town meeting day. We hope you got out and voted. All Things LGBTQ <laughs> is taped at Orca Media in Montpelier, Vermont, which we recognize as being unceded indigenous land. And do you have fun things for us? I do. Oh, well, in that some case. Some are good and some are not so good. Just the good stuff. OK. <laughs> so the first one is uh, from Philadelphia. And um, there was a r arrest of two Philadelphia LGBTQ leaders by state trooper during a fraught highway stop in a very concerning, and it was very concerning, the city mayor said, um, after the video showing some of what happened circulated on social media. Selena Morrison leads the city's Office of LGBTQ Affairs and is top aide to the mayor, Sherelle Parker. Morrison's husband, Darius McLean, runs a community center. Both are black, while the Pennsylvania State Trooper appears to be white. I don't know why he's doing this, McLean cries to his wife Saturday morning as she records him being handcuffed, lying on the side of the shoulder of an elevated highway during a rainstorm. Cars pass by a few feet away, both Morrison, 51, and McLean, 35, were detained on obstruction and resisting arrest charges after the 9 a.m. traffic stop. However, District Attorney Larry Krasner did not immediately file the charges while he investigates. So I don't know why. Sounds fishy. Yeah. I was going to say, at no point in your story did it, does it say what they were stopped for. Yeah. Because obstruction and resisting are after the fact. Right, and then it wasn't listed about why they were stopped. It was probably the usual Drop your head lights blind. out, yeah, you know. So I don't know. But I guess we'll find out more information about that as they investigate. But I imagine the state trooper overstepped. <sighs> yeah. Sounds like maybe. And for us, Anne, the Palm Springs Art Museum announced a new initiative, <clears throat> which will launch next weekend. The Center on LBGTQ Artists and Supports Their Creative Endeavors. The Q Plus Art Initiative will be underway March 16th with a day of talks, performances, and, ce and celebration for the opening of the exhibit to move towards the limits of living, which features work by LGBTQ artists uh, from the museum's permanent collection. According to museum officials, attendees can also expect a lecture on LGBTQ Plus Art history by curator Samitina Gregory as a presentation of the inaugural Distinguished Keynote Award to interdisciplinary Cree artist Kent Mockman. So that sounds that like sounds fun, great. doesn't it? I wish we were there for that I now. I know, I do too. I know. I thought you were going to say it was an initiative to bring more lesbians from cold climates to come visit. But. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, there you are. Yeah. <laughs> Just ahead of North Carolina's primary elections on Tuesday, Donald Trump once again threw his weight between, behind Mark Robinson. Have you heard this guy? Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. Repeating his past bizarre claims that the Republicans are better than Martin Luther King and Martin Luther King on steroids. At the uh, campaign event in the state Saturday, Republicans has described straight couples as superior to gay couples, <laughs> as well as educated LGBTQ plus people to maggots and flies, and refer to homosexuality and transgenderism as filth. And you know, he's, he's looking for governor. He's running for governor. He's lieutenant governor now. and. Um, I don't know, we'll see what happens with that, but that's a scary thought, isn't it? Mm. A new bill proposed in the Missouri House of Representatives, one of the most extreme uh, pieces of anti-LGBTQ legislation against educators yet. Bill 2885, introduced by Republican 
Representative Jamie Craig, Greg, would charge teachers who support a transgender student's social transition with a Class E felony, threatening them with a fine of $10,000 and up to five years in prison, uh, and forcing to, them to register as sex offenders. Mm -hmm. oh. Oh, I, oh. That's lovely. I guess we're not going to go to Missouri no. anytime soon. We're not allowed to leave Vermont. No. Yeah. Well, can we go to Massachusetts? <clears throat> Barely. But we have to go past New Hampshire. Okay, anyway. Um, I love New Hampshire, don't get me wrong. Um, the NYPD is asking for the public's help in locating a group of teenage boys they say attacked two gay men in a homophobic hate crime in Queens last month. The two men were walking on Broadway and we had 33rd Street around 7.30. Uh, four teenagers started yelling anti-LGBTQ slurs and throwing hot objects at the couple. The New York Daily News reported police say one of the victims fell to the ground. He was repeatedly punched in the face before the group fled the scene on foot. They do have a couple of pictures of you know them, but the attackers, but they're very kind of blurry and not very very good. So, and here's another Georgia. Republican state senators in Georgia on Thursday passed a bill that would force state libraries to cut ties with the American Library Association. What a great group that is. Senate Bill 390 was passed by a vote of 33 to 20 vote with no support from Democratic senators. The bill supporters cited the ALA's progressive policies and Emily Drabinsky, the group's lesbian president, as motivation for this legislation. Several states, including Missouri, Montana, South Carolina, and Texas, have announced or enacted some form of disassociation with the ALA, but the Georgia bill passed by the Senate yesterday would be the first to effectively ban nearly all, nearly all association with that group. Ridiculous. Going well, ahead. remember, because we have a similar bill that's going through New, the New Hampshire yeah. House right now, I believe, that would restrict materials that might be offensive mm -hmm. to youth. So, New Hampshire won't pass that, I hope. But A frightening TV show about teen girls. This is a movie. <laughs> and I have a clip after this. So. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> A frightening TV show about teen girls fighting monsters seeps into the daily lives of friends Owen and Maddie, blurring the line between re reality and the images they consume in the film hit, I Saw the TV Glow, from non-binary filmmaker Jane Schoburn. Now the trailer featuring queer actors Justin S Justice Smith and Owen and Bridget Ludley Payne Bill and Ted face the music as Mandy has dropped teenage. Owen is just trying to make it through life in the suburbs when his classmate introduces him to a mysterious late night TV show, a vision of supernatural world beneath their own. In the pale glow of the television, Owen view, Owen's view of reality begins to crack. So let's see that clip. I know this might sound crazy. I don't want to alarm you. Do you remember a TV show we used to watch together? It was called... The Big of Eight? Yeah. Do you watch? Each episode, they help each other fight a new monster from across the county but it's way too scary for most kids. If we're gonna defeat him this time, we're gonna need to harness the full potential of our shared powers. Sometimes the pinko paint feels more real than real life. Maddie, it was a TV show. Are you sure that's all it was? I 
I like girls, you know that, right? Totally, that's fine. What about you, do you like girls? I think that I like TV shows. <laughs> it's our destiny. How can I have a destiny? Something's wrong. This is how life is supposed to feel. Tell me you know it's true. Maddie, it's, it's just the suburbs. Seems like you're always somewhere else like me. Maddie disappeared without a trace. All they found was her TV set burning in the backyard. I told myself I made the right choice. What if I really was someone else? Very far away on the other side of a television screen. And on that note, I'm going to, after the clip, doesn't that look like fun? Yes. <laughs> and there's a film at the Green Mountain Film Festival that sold out. And I wonder oh, if that's that it? it. That oh, might be I it. I hope it's not. It sold out, I think. Oh. I'm pretty sure. It involves Glow, the title. So I'll get back to you on that. Oh, no. I really okay. wanted to see that. I know it. Well, it may be a different film. Okay. I'll double check. Okay. But now I have two stories uh, to start with, one uh, I'm appropriating. <laughs> it took place off the coast of Hawaii, but I'm declaring them international waters <laughs> because I want to report on this story, which involves, for the first time ever, okay. two humpback whales yes. have been documented having gay sex. I had that one. Yes, and well, now let's look at a picture of said whales. No, I'll take it off my list. Uh, they're near Hawaii. They've been photographed having gay sex. For the first time ever, the species has been photographed having any kind of sex. Exactly. Humans have been researching the social behavior of humpback whales for decades, but their sexual behavior was previously undocumented, and reports of penis extrusion by males are relatively rare, according to the study uh, uh, produced by the Marine Mammal Science Journal. Uh, that changed one fateful day in January 2022 in the waters off the coast of Maui when uh, two scientists snapped photos of two male humpback whales having sex. According to the study, the two approached the boat and slowly, they're kind of exhibitionists, I think, they approached the boat and slowly circled it several times, remaining within approximately five meters of the surface throughout the whole encounter and allowing the researchers to photograph, to photograph the whales up close. Stephanie Stack, a lead author of the paper, told The Guardian that the discovery challenges our preconceived notions about humpback whale behavior, and that until now, the sexual behavior of humpback whales had been mostly a mystery. We have long recognized the complex social structures of these incredible creatures. Witnessing the copulation of two male whales for the first time is a unique and remarkable event, she said. The paper notes that homosexual behavior has been observed in other marine mammals, including walruses, various species of dolphin, and other species of whale. In bottlenose dolphins, male-male sexual behavior is well documented as an important aspect of social bonding. Researchers aren't sure about the underlying reasons for the humpback whale's behavior, yet Although they speculate that whale B was mistakenly trying to mate with whale A, that it was trying to reinforce a social bond, or that it was attempting to express dominance. There must be other options, too, that <laughs> yeah. the whales know that we don't. While the exact reasons for the humpback whales having gay sex are yet to be determined, one might say at the end of the day, love is love. Yeah. I was going to say, I, my thought was, okay, you've been after us long enough. Here you are. Now leave us alone. Maybe. Yeah, just, maybe. Maybe that was away. why they were. Now go, go away. <laughs> now you can see. <laughs> Your romantic moment. <laughs> now I have an overview from around the world. 
which is a little sweeping. Um, the one story that was kind of unpleasant involves Turks and Caicos, uh, a UK territory south of the Bahamas, and it's been under the radar for a while. But the Miami Herald reported on Friday that it had has had a same-sex marriage case dragging on for 16 months. The case involves a binational couple who were married in Florida and were seeking to have the marriage recognized for immigration purposes. Based on um, this, based on communication with the couple and their lawyer on Friday, the court delivered a sort of mixed ruling. The judge ruled that the government's refusal to issue a residency permit violated the territorial constitution's ban on sexual orientation discrimination. But it did not find the refusal to recognize same-sex marriage in itself unlawful. So, recognition of same-sex couples for immigration purposes only. More details will, be, will become clear when the written ruling is released. It sounds like there are grounds for appeal or for separate cases seeking additional rights for same-sex couples, like in taxation, though the couple's plans right now are up in the air. Turks, Turks and Caicos Constitution specifically bans sexual orientation discrimination. Its section on marriage protects the right to heterosexual marriage, but does not explicitly ban same-sex marriage. Uh, as a UK territory, TNC is bound by the Uni European Convention on Human Rights, which courts have ruled requires members to recognize same-sex couples, though not marriage as of yet. It is possible that the UK appointed governor could use this ruling as an excuse to introduce civil union legislation like the Cayman Island governor did a few <laughs> years ago. Now, Cyprus. Campaigning for marriage equality is beginning in Cyprus. The government says it will start thinking about it after it deals with gender identity legislation <laughs> expected this year. LGBTQ activists have been meeting with justice manager. They have a meeting on March 13th with the justice manager minister, which they hope will yield some progress, including, at a minimum, amending regulations so that foreign marriages are recognized as civil unions on the island at least. The main governing party is opposed to marriage equality, but they only have a minority. Uh, so it seems like the math should favor a bill if it's introduced, and the current president campaigned on it last year. UK. MPs killed a private member's bill to ban conversion therapy on Friday. While the bill could possibly be brought back for debate, it probably won't happen before the elections that are expected to be called this year. The opposition Labor Party riding high in the polls has pledged to ban conversion therapy, so that's good. good. Costa Rica. A bill to ban conversion therapy continues to be debated in Congress, with some activists worried the government may water it down to get the necessary votes. Speaking of conversion therapy, bans on conversion therapy came into effect in Portugal and the state of Morelos, Mexico this week. Mexico's federal bill to ban it ought to come up for a final vote sometime this month in Congress, though no date has been set. In Mexico, the Supreme Court ruled that trans women are considered women when it comes to laws that deal with violence against women and femicide. El Salvador, uh, LGBT organizations in El Salvador are speaking against the, governor, against the government's coordinate, coordinated campaign against them. So let's not go to El Salvador anytime soon. Ghana. There'll be more about this. There's continuing fallout from Parliament passing an anti-LGBTQ law. Uh, a popular news host has struck out against the bill, pointing out that it will be illegal for him to interview LGBTQ people under the law. And the IMF said it's closely monitoring events in the West African country after the bill, which may impact how and if it works in the country is going forward. And I have much more about that. Linda may cut me off about it when I get to it. But let's go to Georgia, <laughs> the other Georgia. The caucus's <clears throat> country's government has announced it will introduce a bill to ban LGBTQ propaganda in the next two weeks. Georgia's democratic and human rights backsliding ought to be conserving, 
concerning and should have negative consequences for its bid to join the European Union. Current member states Hungary and Lithuania have similar laws on the books and have both come under criticism from the EU over them. Still, one expects that this is just posturing and pandering ahead of October elections. Belarus, another former <laughs> Soviet republic, is considering its own bill to ban LGBT propaganda. It's a basic dis dictatorship that's closely, closely aligned with Russia. Dictator Lukashenko's loyalists unsurprisingly won last week's par parliamentary elections in which the opposition was not allowed to field candidates. Uh, he has announced that he plans to run for a seventh five-year term next year. Can we send the mega people over there to live? And we could. India. The News Broadcasting and Digital Standards Authority issued guidelines relating to coverage of the LGBTQ community, urging broadcasters not to promote homophobia and to refrain from outing people unless there's a true public interest. Maybe like if they're What's hypocrites, I don't know. Yeah. Canada. The political right is continuing its meltdown over trans issues. The federal conservatives are running scared in the wake of a leader's comments about banning trans women from bathrooms and change rooms. And the New Brunswick progressive conservatives have seen two <coughs> candidates drop out of this year's elections over concerns that the party has become too anti-trans. How can you be progressive? Yeah, progressive conservative. Yeah. But well, they left because maybe they were progressive. And it's too anti-trans, but I could continue, but I bet Linda's going to want me to move on. Yeah. I'm beginning to we'll anticipate you. Now. Okay. Okay, so the trivia, and Anne got it. We're giving her credit. She gets them all. Uh, Not all. Mm. Oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Charles. <clears throat> so this is Women's History Month. And Friday, March 8th, is International Women's Day. And March 8th has been celebrated as International Women's Day since 1911, which sort of took me a little by surprise. But it was picked, it was chosen because it coordinated with when the US and Europe really started doing organizing on behalf of women's rights. And in recognition of it, Becca Ballant has put out a public service announcement recognizing her role models. This time, she included a new individual. <coughs> and that person might be the first lesbian who was appointed to the federal court. Who might that be? So looking at events. <laughs> We have Rainbow Umbrella with the Women's Discussion Group right. and the Book Discussion Group. And, and again, I'm going to say your notes from your conversations in the women's group. Let's go back to the book group. We're reading Zaina Arafat's You Exist Too Much. She's a oh. Palestinian queer writer. And we encourage our audience to come and join us just to email the show or Linda and me. Is it Exit Too Much, isn't it? You exist exit? too much. I thought it was exit. No, no. you exist too much. Okay. I have a book that was gifted to me that I may give to you, but I only have one copy, and it's LGBTQ stories coming out of Ukraine since the conflict started. Oh, so wow. I, it oh, is, wonderful. it is amazing, and they're short stories that. And but, this book looks really good. So if anybody wants to uh, to join us, please join let us, us know. Please send us a message. And as. Anne has alluded the Green Mountain Film Festival is happening the 14th through the 17th. There are queer shows that are occurring. But go and check, because it sounds as though some of them are already selling out. So yes, they are. I'm good going. Sorry. So Fox Market uh -huh. on Saturday, March 16th, is their Foxy Gala, which they said, think of this as your queer adult prom night. Come dressed to whatever nines you'd like for a night of magic, performances, music, sexy get down dancing, and community love. Mm -hmm. And all of the proceeds are going to help with Fox Market's opening in Barrie that's supposed to happen this spring. It's a sliding scale with a suggested donation of $50, but 
sliding scale is what you can afford. So they would rather you come and celebrate with them. Very nice. But also, thinking of Linda, and maybe an upcoming birthday, <laughs> on Friday, March 22nd from 7 to 9 p.m. is Queer Poetry Night with an open mic. I know. They're still waiting for you. <laughs> social tinkering in Rutland. Their social gathering is on Wednesday, March 27th, 6 p.m., Vermont Farmers Food Center on West Street. Our friends Babes in Bethel on Saturday, March 16th, 8 p.m. to midnight. It's a queer dance party. Mm -hmm. They were only charging $5 cover, and they're going to have their favorite DJs coming and doing music. We should go for dancing, Ann. We're going to a book launch there. Yeah. Oh, at Babes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Oh, Leonard's? No, it's oh. a lesbian friend of ours, lesbian mother who raised kids in Maine. During... And you'll pass that information on so I can include it in a future event? Yes, it's coming up soon. I'll do okay. that. Okay. And someone that we haven't been promoting, and we're going to a lot more, Rainbow Bridge. Mm -hmm. I went on their calendar. They're doing, currently doing a lot of forums saying, please come in and talk with us about how we meet your needs. Not, this is what we have to offer. It's, what would you like from us? Mm -hmm. Nice perspective. They've been offering a queer writers group, mm. an open community mic with music, poetry, comics, storytellers, a craft club, a board game night. When was the last time we sat down and played Monopoly? I play Scrabble. I, the, All right. I think that counts. Yeah, but we can't take professional no. Professor Charles to. And they're doing like the affinity groups, support groups. You know, how do you identify as well as open community meetings with the come ask your questions, learn about who each other is. So they're doing phenomenal work, and this is somebody I, I would really like us to support. Okay, so the book is, I believe it's called Drift. The writer is Penny Gleesinger, I think is how you pronounce it. She's a lesbian mother, and her, one of her books, she's speaking at Norwich with another friend. Uh, but at Babe's Bar, she's going to be reading on March 26th. I'm wrong. What? I'm looking at 16th, March 16th <laughs> at 2.30. Right so it's, you know, yeah, it is coming right, right up. But up. I encourage you, you know, it should be fun. And I love babes. Yeah. And back to you. Okay. Well, there's fighting back in Florida where transgender activists marched on the state capitol with a simple message. Let us live. At a rally on the steps outside the building on Wednesday, LGBTQ leaders and progressive lawmakers slammed legislation threatening to erase trans identities. Beyond fighting transphobic bills, trans leaders and allies also promised to speak, to seek office and, and sit more queer lawmakers in the halls of Capitol to fight Republican Governor Ron DeSantos, DeSantis's anti-LGBTQ policies. And here is a picture of that group um, giving a hard time to DeSantis. So, and the policies of Florida. And Pat, and I think it's pronounced Logue, L-O-G-U-E, was a Lambda legal attorney who worked on groundbreaking cases involving LGBTQ youth, sodomy laws, and don't ask, don't tell, and later became a judge, has died. <clears throat> she died last week, according to a Lambda legal press release. It did not state the cause of her death. Pat Logue was a brilliant lawyer, a trailblazing, a trailblazing jurist, and a hero to the LGBT community. Pat's legacy includes numerous landmark cases she litigated over her 14 years as a lawyer with Lambda Legal that transformed the lives of LGBTQ people nationwide. Her gifts and she will be greatly missed. And here is her picture.
Did she die of early onset Alzheimer's? I don't know. It didn't say. Um, sometimes they don't say, you know, white people. Um, but a 16-year-old boy is recovering after he was stabbed and beaten by a group of attackers yelling racist and anti-gay slurs on a popular Southern California beach. Video of the attack has been circulating, circulating among local high schools, and the victim's mother is reaching out for help. The attack took place on Saturday, February 10th, at Dock Wilder Beach, just west of Los Angeles International Airport and directly under the flight path of departing planes. The victim's mother, identified only as Frankie, told local CW affiliate KTLA that her son was attending a party and promised and promoted on social media when a friend was attacked by a group of five to six teens. So, U.S. Senator LaPonza Butler of California, the first black lesbian in the chamber, kicked off a series of readings from banned books. Thursday, on the Senate floor, with an excerpt from the work of another black lesbian, Audre Lorde's sister outsider. Butler began by invoking the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution and its guarantee of freedom of speech and the press without government interference. This amendment gives all Americans the right to speak, publish, and read what they wish, free from government censorship, uh, but a nationwide campaign in states like Florida, Utah, North Dakota, and even California has been deployed to limit our children's learning and enforce restrictions of, um, you know, uh, of our, our reading and our, um, they're trying to pass all these bills. So we, I would like, I wish I could have gotten a clip from that reading Audrey Lord's, oh, yeah. you know, but I didn't, I couldn't find one. And the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression, FIRE, is seeking an emergency injunction from the Supreme Court that would allow its clients to host a charity drag show in late March uh, at West Texas A&M University. Only this court can halt an ongoing violation of two of the most fundamental First Amendment protections, the bars against uh, the bars against prior restraint and viewpoint-based censorship reads the emergency request by fire, which is representing the LGBTQ student organization, Spectrum WT, and two of the organization's leaders. So good luck to them. And um, I guess this is a, a, a continuing problem because um, after they repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell, thousands of veterans uh, who were discharged on other than honorary op or over their sexual orientation continue to face barriers for uh, federal benefits that otherwise would have been available to them. The Pentagon has endeavored to address the problem, but advocates say the agency has been too slow to act while service members, rather than the department, bear a considerable burden are requesting reviews of their papers. A process so complicated that many have to seek legal counsel for help navigating the bureaucratic red tape, which is awful. I mean, you have to get a lawyer to help you get through. Oh, good. Well, first you have to figure out what is the office that you need to be talking with to get the action that you're seeking. Yeah. And that can be a four-hour, let me through the maze of punch two if you want. Yeah. I worked at the VA in New yeah. Orleans. The bureaucracy there was unbelievable. And the turnover of medical staff and, and you know, the waiting endlessly for appointments and then never seeing the same doctor twice. It was really, it was hard to watch. And lastly, the Biden-Harris re-election campaign announced on Wednesday that Rohi Rustam 
has been tape, tapped to serve as its national organizing director, becoming the first woman of color and the first LGBTQ person to serve in this role for a general election presidential campaign. Rustam, who is Bangladeshi American, was most recently the inter interim national organizing director for the Democratic National Committee, where she led early organizing of of efforts for the campaign in Arizona and Wisconsin, and also directed Get Out the Vote initiatives for key 2023 races, like Kentucky's gubernatorial and Virginia state legislative elections, which saw sweeping Democratic victories. So congratulations to Rahi Rustam. And, um, that's it for me, Ann. Okay, let's start with the correction. The name of Penny Guisinger's book is Shift, not Drift. Oh. Drift was Rachel Maddow's book. It's <laughs> Shift, A Memoir of Identity and Other Illusions. Sounds like fun. Right. And so she'll be at uh, Babes. And the other thing is I can't find, I can't coordinate what's at the Green Mountain Film Festival during this show, <laughs> but it is an excuse for me to encourage you to look at what they've got and get a ticket before they sell out. They sold out of my horror show, maybe. Maybe. But I hope I haven't misinformed you, which is possible. <laughs> um, let's go to Nigeria now. And I have a picture before you of uh, Babatunde Apalowo, who is a Nigerian director uh, who um, discussed his queer film and the lynching of a gay friend. I was so touched by what happened to my friend and it made me come aware, he said. Um, he's director of the gay-themed Nigerian film, All the Colors of the World Are Between Black and White, and he was shocked to learn that one of his college roommates was lynched for being gay. Our residence was very small with bunk beds. Uh, it's difficult to move around in that small physical space and not get to know people well, yet I never knew he was gay. He was lynched, the director continued. That really got to me because I thought perhaps I was part of the problem. He didn't trust me enough to tell me what he was going through. It made me wonder and think, even though we were living so close together in this same physical space, our reality was completely different. I couldn't imagine him going through all those things and I had absolutely no idea. All the colors of the world are between black and white. Uh, Apalowo's first feature film is a rare queer film to con come out of Nigeria, where marrying someone of the same sex, as you know, carries a 14-year prison term. It's a love story between two men, Bambino and Bawa, who meet while Bawa is taking pictures around the city of Lagos. Apalowo um, the director had trouble finding actors who were willing to take gay roles, but eventually Tope Delela was cast in, as Bambino and Rio David as Bawa. The film has been a hit at festivals around the world, winning the Teddy Award given to the best LGBTQ-themed feature at last year's Berlin International Film Festival. It will not, however, screen in, in Nigeria. The government didn't put up any barriers to the making of the film, but the director knew it wouldn't be approved by the National Film and Video Censors Board for showing in Nigerian theaters. He's encouraged about the possibility of getting it on streaming services, though. Apolowo, 37, who now lives in the UK, urged African filmmakers to address subjects they're passionate about, including those that might be considered off limits. I was so touched about what happened to my friend and it made me become aware. I became aware of what is going on, he told Variety. There's a topic, if there's a topic you want to approach, you just have to be passionate enough about it to do the work to make it extremely authentic, he added. Every African filmmaker should really dig, dig when approaching any topic that's taboo, find the order in the story. So now let me give you a little plot before I show you a short clip. Uh, in this astounding feature debut, two young men who feel a powerful connection with one another come up against Nigerian social structures. Bambino is a delivery driver, driver 
settling, settling into his solitary life in a small apartment. His new friend Bawa runs a betting shop, but takes photographs around Lagos as a hobby. One beautiful afternoon, Bambino accompanies him on one of his sojourns, and a deep, palpable bond emerges between the two men. Living in a country where homosexuality is, is illegal, the men dance around their feelings and each other. With a clear vision, the film movingly demonstrates the difficulties of expressing love in places where homosexuality remains taboo. So now let's look at a short clip of All the Colors of the World Are Between Black and White. If you say just to waste our time, you can't waste time. No matter what thing we do, time will move. What we can waste is our lives. I can't. I couldn't find a record of where it's playing. So well, I was gonna, about to ask you. Yeah. I'm going to encourage viewers to look on their own and keep their eyes peeled. And uh, this is a tangent, but I read a wonderful memoir called *Asylum: A Memoir and a Manifesto* by a writer activist Idafe Okporo. And I encourage readers to pick it up. It's really good. I review, was able to review it um, in the Gay and Lesbian Review. But it tells you not only about life in Nigeria, but the immigration system. I mean, it was really um, disturbing and enlightening and ultimately inspiring, I would did say. It, um, did it, was it Nigeria that expelled all their uh, Indian residents, people who lived there from India? I think that was South Africa. That was South Africa. Now, I have two more, one more miserable story from Africa involving Ghana. Well, it's, uh, the parliament has just passed one of the world's harshest LGBTQ bills. Um, the Human Sexual Rights Family Values Bill was first introduced in 2021, but it has now uh, passed through parliament with no formal opposition. It requires the signature of the president, and I have a related story about that who has previously vowed never to decriminalize homosexuality. At one point, uh, the deputy parliamentary leader attempted to introduce an amendment softening the language around the prison terms, but was hackled down by other members of the parliament. Should the bill become law, people who identify as gay, lesbian, bi, queer, trans, non-binary um, could be sentenced to up, three, up to three years in prison. Additionally, those found guilty of promotion, sponsorship, or support of LGBTQ plus activities can face up to five years in prison. Gay sex itself is already punishable by up to three years in prison in Ghana, though no one has yet been convicted. Um, so there's been an objection, but um, Ghana's president um, said that he is going to delay his consideration of the bill amid legal challenges and warnings it could lead to his country losing billions of dollars in funding. In a statement, the president uh, said, a challenge has been mounted at the Supreme Court by a concerned citizen to the constitutionality of the proposed legislation, and that he will wait to the decision of the court before action is taken in regards to the bill. But he's, uh, he also adds that he's aware the bill has raised considerable anxieties in certain quarters of the diplomatic community and among some friends of Ghana. It may look like it's back, it's turning its back on its hitherto enviable longstanding record on human rights observance and attachment to the rule of law. The decision follows um, a warning from the Finance Ministry of Ghana which was leaked to several news publications that urges him to hold off signing the bill into law because the country might lose up to $3.8 billion in World Bank funding, yeah. a situation that could affect its ultimate economic recovery. 
After a Ghanaian bill is passed by Parliament, the President has seven days to sign it into law. If he does not, he has 14 days to give his reasons. Um, right now, he's meeting with senior figures, senior you know, political figures to assess the impact of enforcing the bill. Uh, however, LGBTQ people have already reported forced evictions, loss of jobs, increased violence, and other violations of rights guaranteed by the Constitution since the bill was introduced in Parliament. Now, you recall last year the passage of Uganda's anti-homosexual law prompted the World Bank to halt new loans to the East African country. A spokesperson for the bank said the legislation fundamentally contradicted their values. So the World Bank has got their oar in, and maybe we, I hope they well, good. prevail. <coughs> Money talks. I hope. Now let's look at a picture of two uh, Australian victims of murder, Jesse Baird, 26, and his flight attendant partner, oh, Luke Davies, 29. Awesome they were, um, <coughs> their bodies were found. Um, and they were shot and killed by their ex-boyfriend, who was a police officer, hours after he admitted to killing and hiding them under rocks and debris in a rural area. Um, Baird was a television reporter. Um, they were found in sur the same surfboard bags, he and his flight attendant partner, Luke Davies, that the police alleged the killer used to carry the bodies from Baird's home last week. Um, and someone else helped carry the bodies, but didn't know what was in the surfboard bags. Um, and the allegation that a police officer committed murder using his service pistol has shocked the nation and prompted Sydney gay and lesbian Mardi Gras organizers to ask police late on Monday not to march in their annual parade, parade weekend. Handgun ownership is highly restricted in Australia. Police are reviewing gun handling procedures that enabled Lamar Condon, the suspect, to sign out his pistol to allegedly use in a violent crime off-duty. We're in this position that a police firearm was used and, can never, and that can never happen again, Police Commissioner Karen Webb said. We have to look to ways to mitigate that risk in whatever way we can. Um, Webb has taken part in the annual Mardi Gras march, um, and she asked the board to reconsider. Um, she said they had a fruitful meeting, um, but people say that the, um, the Mardi Gras celebration began as a, like in Stonewall, um, as a resistance to police, police brutality, although the first uh, Mardi Gras Parade was in 1978. So there was a lot of back and forth and controversy and people threatening to defund the march if the police weren't there and so forth. Um, floats would have boycotted the parade if police were out allowed to march and if they weren't. So anyway, they're not marching in or out of uniform. So do you have any uh, stories you want to do headlines? Or if you have another shorter story, you could do that in headlines. but. I think, you know. Well, let me show you a picture of lesbian artist Alexandra Skohilenko, 33. She's just received a multi-year prison sentence for criticizing Putin and the, mayor and the military. And her former criticism was that she substituted like five or six price tags in a grocery store for anti-war messages and accusations of Putin. So she's already served 19 months in confinement, and now they're she's, they're sending into her to a penal colony for like oh like a gulag for um, seven years, and she's not well. She has uh, bipolar, heart disease, PTSD, celiac disease, and a cyst on her right ovary. So, but she's defiant. Um, Good for her. Yeah, Russian similarly, Russian security services dragged a gay night gay night party goers out of, in, out of a bar and into the snow and beat them and arrested nine of them. Um, Ukrainian veterans, uh, let me show you a picture of Viktor Polybenko. Uva Ukrainian veterans protest after the church re 
withdraws the gay soldiers' medal. So they all got medals. He was a medic, and they got medals for their performance in the war. But then um, he went on Facebook and said, I'm so surprised I got this medal from the church, because the Greek Orthodox <laughs> Church, they must be coming around about gay people. Au contraire. Is it the Orthodox? Russian the Greek Orthodox, Orthodox yes. Greek is, yeah. Oh, it is Russian Orthodox, of yeah. course. I'm so sorry, Linda. Thank you for correcting me. Um, yes. So they took the, it away. It, well, actually, it's the Ukrainian Orthodox Church yeah. of Kiev. So they took it away. Um, <laughs> a church leader quickly asserted that the, the denomination still considers homosexuality a sin, and they took this medal away. But he said what was really moving was all the vets returned their medals in yeah. solidarity, and that was really Good. what moved him. And my last story, uh, sh let me show you a picture of Greece's first same-sex marriage. Uh, the prime minister called and co congratulates, congratulated Demetrius Elephantsonotis and Stavros Gavrinati. So hey. they're delighted. Thank you, Fini. Ian. That was a End fun of ending. story. <laughs> so this is town meeting day. What we're watching is Burlington. Will Emma Mulvaney Stanek become the first openly LGBTQ plus mayor in the state of Vermont? We've never done it before. And then we're going to be watching in May to see if Barry follows suit with Sam yeah. Stockwell. Now, so in, is, this is just for to pick the Democrat who's going to run. No, this this, this is, is it. Well, this Burlington, is the yeah. election in Burlington. Oh, nationally, so, it's the primary. Okay, Super yeah. Tuesday. Okay. So, in one of the worst kept secrets, on March twenty seventh in Brattleboro. Somebody may be announcing that they're running for re-election. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then Becca will be in Burlington on March 30th for their official announcement parties. But you heard it here God knows how many times after. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. So things, that, things I'm going to be watching, and the legislature is on break this week because of town meeting day. They always have this week off. But when they come back, they're going to have to work quickly to meet crossover. And a crossover is that quirky thing in our legislature where a bill has to make it from one chamber to the other to guarantee it will be debated during that year's session. So things we're watching is, remember I had reported on tuition and in independent schools and mm -hmm. the Alliance Defending Freedom and their suits against Vermont schools. Right. Senate Education has a House bill that will deal with this issue, but it doesn't seem to be moving. Mm. The other thing we're going to be watching, or I'm going to be watching for, is that constitutional amendment that will really put equality of rights in the Vermont Constitution. And this is the proposal that was brought forth by Mark Hughes, and it needs to pass by two-thirds and both chambers this year to be considered during the beginning of the next biennium, which starts 2025, so it could go Is out for a moving? vote 2026. No, this has to happen very quickly. And this is the story that I just found today. And Anybody who knows me will appreciate when I said it just stopped me in my tracks. And probably for the only time you will see me do this, I'm going to share a picture of a survivor of sexual violence. And the reason I'm doing that is he's stepping forward and identifying who he is, saying everyone else has told my story I'm reclaiming it because I want our legislature to change the law. Mm. And the bill in question is S-278, which is passed unanimously. This bill deals with what's called comparative negligence. And I want you to hold on to that. This only applies in civil cases, not criminal. Comparative negligence Negligence means if you can prove that the victim who is seeking damages 
was at least partially responsible for what occurred, you don't have to pay them if their responsibility is greater than 50%. Oh, for heaven's sake. No, and this is Vermont statutes. And what happened to this poor young man? He and a teammate football team were sexually assaulted at a team dinner that was off campus. And the comparative negligence got brought into the case when they said he had been to a party the week before where there was boxing, so he should have known that violence could occur. Therefore, he appealed, appealed to the Vermont Supreme Court who overturned the lower court ruling who said that this young wow. man was responsible and said no. It is the school districts. He is now seeking damages. Let no, he is, he's got the damage. He's now the seeking law. legislative change. This this is Zach Blauden, and I can't tell you the courage it takes for that young man to do what he just did. Good. He testified in front of cameras in the Senate Judiciary. And quickly, the answer to the trivia question, because this is also one of my personal champions, first lesbian to a federal court is our own Beth Robinson, who was our first out LGBTQ member of the Vermont Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. She was instrumental in civil unions and marriage equality. And she might have been Vermonter of the year mm -hmm. in 2000 when civil unions were enacted. So with that. Remember everybody, resist, resist and vote. <laughs>